Okay, here we go. We're rolling. Okay. We are rolling, and here we are with Melinda Hannigan. Did I say that right? You did. Okay, Melinda. Where are you from, Melinda? Seattle. You're from Seattle? You were born and raised in Seattle? No, I grew up in San Francisco, went away to college, have been in Seattle for about 37 years. Wow, okay. Yeah. yeah. And you're a special person, and I'm so glad that I got here today because you're going to be leaving today, right? Or tomorrow. Tomorrow. Tomorrow morning, early. Tomorrow morning, you're leaving for a road trip back to Seattle. Right. And you were here as, why don't you explain what you, what you, what you were doing in Gloucester for the past, how many, how long you were here? As, I've been here a month. Yeah. I drove out here from Seattle and I'm the Rocky Neck Artist Colony Artist in Residence. And how, what, okay, explain to me what that is, how you got picked to be the Artist in Residence and what it, what it means. Is this a big honor or what, what is it? I, I think it is um, because of the the history that Rocky Neck has with artists. Um, for I, it's the oldest artist calling in the United States, and it's known for that. Um, there was an application process, and you sent in images of your work, and I did, and I do sort of abstract maritime work, and I said, you know. I'm looking for new information, so Gloucester may be the place for me, and they fit. selected me. It was a good fit. Yeah. And so you, have you had a great time while you've been I've here? I've had a great time. Fabulous. So, have you met some amazing people? I have. Why don't you name a few of them, and why they're amazing? Oh, uh, well, some of them, I don't know their names. Uh, uh, many of the people, I they just came into the studio when it was open. Part of the deal for the residency is to have it open mm -hmm. to the public on the weekends, and I have met... Harvard professors, I think four or five of them. I was kind of impressed because I'm from Seattle and I don't know too many people that have gone to Harvard. Um, and um, you know, some of those Harvard professors are really dummies, but they're, they're, <laughs> they're book smarts, but they're real dummies. You know that, right? Oh, well, don't let them, don't know, let them. Impressed. Yeah, I know, but don't <laughs> let them fool you. You know, we're working people down here with a lot of smarts too. Yeah. I'm just teasing. Uh, no, no, I, I, I know what you mean about that because that's one of the things I love about Gloucester. It's real. Yeah. It is real, and um, you know, I grew up around the docks in San Francisco, and Honolulu, and Seattle, and um, the shishi little towns around here aren't as interesting to me. Gloucester, as soon as I drove in, I thought, okay, I get this. This is going to be good. Now, the, a lot of your paintings, there's a theme in them, um, like a rust kind of a theme. I'm is the that Rust right? Queen. You're the Rust Queen. Yes, I am. <laughs> Explain. <laughs> um, I just can paint Rust really well. Mm. I like to. And um, it's just, they're not, it's not in all my paintings, but anything anything to do with metal has Rust usually. So right, Metal and salt water especially, right? Especially. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, so I've kind of perfected Rust for, mm -hmm. for my work. There you go. Yeah. All right, take me around. I want. To, let's talk about what's okay. what's what's right behind you. You can stand up. Okay. And uh, and we're gonna talk about some of the pieces that are right behind you. This is stuff stuff that you've done while you're here. This everything on the walls. Um, these two. I brought two canvases. I brought six pieces of watercolor paper, and they all are oil paintings. And when I drove into Gloucester, the very first day before I ever even got out here to Rocky Neck. Um, I stopped at the little shop again and again where Frida makes sail bags out of old sails. And I thought, oh, this is cool. And I bought one of her bags, that, that over there. Uh, that, okay. that to me looks like an abstract painting. Well, she is very talented. She is. Yeah, my wife has a, a one of a kind Frida lobster bag that she made course. special for her. Yeah. But so, and then I spent a few days looking around Gloucester and trying to figure out. Maritime, what can I do? And, and um, you know, there's no big ships here. I knew that, but I thought there would be a bigger fishing fleet. And, you know, maybe it was just the day I was in. There wasn't, they, there weren't that much, wasn't that much going on. And all of a sudden, the light bulb went on, and I thought, oh, those, those bits of sail, that's interesting. So I called Frida, and she said, I will. I, I checked you out. I checked you out on the website. Your what? website. Oh, my good mom gloss, You mean? No, she checked. Oh, she me checked out. you out. Okay. And I said, I, I, she said, I love your work. And I said, okay, well, here I have an idea. And she said, I will help you. Anything you want, anything you need. If I can do it, I'll help you. So I went over there, and she gave me 
bits of, of sails. Some of this is too, like this, way too heavy to make a, a sail bag out of. Yeah. So she, but she gave it to me. And it's so interesting and yeah. Yeah, and then having looked at some of the old sails and the construction, I was really fascinated by that because my dad had a sailboat when we were growing up and they were just plain old sails. Now they've got all these this mm -hmm. interesting um, and, I yeah. you know, Kevlar and carbon and other weird stuff in it. So I thought these would make great paintings. Yeah. And then, um, and this, there's a story about this one, but there's a better story about this one because it's about Gloucester. And um, this was the first one I did. And these, this grid is made out of sailmaker twine. And I just laid it, glued it in there, laid it in there, and then came over it with oil paint. And then I met Josh Bevins at his sail loft. And we got, and I told him what I was trying to do, and he's a busy man. And, but he did tell me the story about this boat that he did, he made new sails for, and it's called Spirit. And it's a one of a kind John Alden design. He was a famous um, yacht designer, and the only one of its kind is here in Gloucester. And this is the symbol for the, for the boat, and this was the number on the boat. So that's what I did with that. Wow. And then, this, and then I used the, he gave me some wax twine up here. And um, I, I actually, I can't even sew buttons, but I did sew that on there. Cool. And then this one is, I found a, a used book in Dog, Dogtown Books, yep. Bob. Bob at Dogtown Books. Bob Ritchie, yep. And he helped me a lot, because he went through all of his books on sailing. And there was this one that interested me on Starbucks, and I, um, I bought the book, and when I got it back here and I started looking through it, I realized that, oh, and it was on Starboats of 1971, and it talked about the world championship in Sweden that year, in Gothenburg, Sweden, and the guy that won it, this is the number of his boat, wow. and he's from Seattle, See so that? I thought, oh, cool, mm -hmm. and so there's my Seattle thing, but information from Gloucester. Yeah, see that, this is all these people all oh, Bob Ritchie, Fried, all these great people. I know. You know all, Gloucester. Yeah. Gloucester's that's right. magic. Yeah. Um, these are the first, this is really heavy watercolor paper. And the first time I ever painted on paper was actually when I was in Ireland doing a residency there. And, uh, you know, I had to get them back. And my canvas, and this work is small for me. My work is generally a lot mm -hmm. bigger. But, you know, again, I. I love eight. That's like the Chinese lucky number. Ah, yeah. So eight, it's a good one. And this one um, is the symbol for a soling. And there's a big... For what? It's a boat called a soling. Okay. Is that your phone? Go ahead. And um, there's a big fleet of these in Marblehead. Oh. And I had gone to Marblehead doing my research trying to find a sailmaker there. And there aren't any left in Marblehead. They what? There's none in Marblehead. Really? You have to go to Salem, and then they're hard to find. You know, what's stuck in my head is Maddie's Sail Loft, which is the bar that we always used to, we, as we were, you know, back, back in the day when I was young and relevant, you know, that's where we used to go, is Maddie's Sail Loft, and there was a crazy yeah. bar where they used to, you know. Well, yeah. they're probably, maybe that's still there, but the sail makers aren't. Yeah, wow. So, um, but anyway, this is for a soling boat, and when my husband and I, he was in graduate school, and we moved out to Seattle, He's from Denver originally, and and by the way, he's a ship's pilot in Puget Sound. Oh. So the maritime thing is yeah. all about the family and all that too. But um, these boats were new in the 70s, and I begged him to buy us one. He said, I'm in graduate school. I have two little kids. Are you crazy? But I did want to use that image because it reminded me of that and mm -hmm. how I must have really been out of whack. Melinda, thank you so much. Tell people yeah. quickly where they can find your work. My work is in Seattle. Okay, and, and what's the website? MelindaHannigan.com. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you, Joey.